Well, during the Depression, uh, uh, the, the banks closed and my parents had to move and my father and us moved to uh, uh, Woodbridge in 1932. And uh, we moved, at that time, we moved to, uh, to Featherstone, uh, which uh, then, before we moved there, at, at one point, it had been a large, very large dairy farm and a cheese factory. Uh, and uh, there's just one building left now. Uh, and that at that time was the post office, and that was before our time. But uh, uh, was that the Miniville post office? Miniville post office? No, oh no. There was a post office before that? No. Uh, when we moved here, and for many years, uh, when you come across Route 1 Bridge, uh, there was a store there, but then there was a house, and a gentleman by the name of Warren Clark lived in that house and there was one room that was the post office and there was a they carried all the mail then to Woodbridge and it was a man and his wife uh, 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 Benny and O.C. Reed and they carried mail all over but uh, they delivered to individual houses plus they went to all all the old stores had mailboxes like Russell store and uh, the uh, Ida Davis store, Ida Davis store, which now is where the McCourt building is now. And Russell store is there at, uh, uh, right there, right, right next to Lowe's. And that was Cleve Russell's store. And, uh, and then there was another store called Agneville, but they would drop mail off at those stores but, and to the other people, but they carried the mail to all of Woodbridge. But then the next post office was down right on uh, off a of Horner Road, uh, uh, near where the Handy Dandy right was. Right across, almost just passing down near where Handy Dandy was. Yes. Did you start the Handy Dandy Mart, or were you? Do you remember when that was the Handy Dandy Market? It's yes, still my there. father and I built that. Who did? My father and I. Your father and yourself built that. Right. We built the Handy Dandy Center. And when we built it, there was not a grocery store in Woodbridge. Uh, there was nothing but country stores. And, uh, of course, Red Lens and Occoquan, and uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the one that was right out next to Route 1, uh, on the right side where uh, the barbecue place is now. Well, that, Dixie Bones? Dixie Bones. Well, no, right next to Dixie Bones, but right where Dixie Bones is too, was also the Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. And and there was a, a a country store right there next to it, close to it. And and then soon after Handy Dandy opened, IGA was the first grocery store to come to Woodbridge. What, a and that, that just as you come in on uh, the, uh, the, the road there, Auckland Road, uh, it was on the right, right there. So the, uh, the Handy Dandy Market was, uh, before IGA showed up, you and your father uh, established that. And uh, uh, how long did you operate it? Well, I, well, I never operated it. I leased it out oh, okay. uh, to uh, Bob Roadcap and Phil's Lamb and uh, leased it to and Bob Roadcap then had the lease for years. And then we sold it to Bob Roadcap. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, he passed away some years ago, but his family still has that center, I think, and they le they lease it out now. Yeah, it's still at, uh, privately owned since yes, since it was built in 1959. Right. That's interesting because uh, you would have thought 7-Eleven would have bought it or something right. like that. That's very I, interesting. I, 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 you you mentioned the reeds uh, when you were talking about the post office. So it's one topic I wanted to get into with you is uh, uh, local families uh, that were farmers that you might have known. In, in my work, um, I've recently been involved with a couple of uh, restoration projects at uh, Reed cemeteries, family cemeteries right. off of Mayville, the one uh, across from the water park and then there's another one a little farther 
uh, off of Princedale. Um, is that the, possibly the same Reed family? Um, at, or what do you know about the Reed family, I guess I should ask. Now, which family is that? Reed. Reed family? Yeah, R-E-I-D. Right. Uh, I don't know a lot about the Reed now, and I'm not sure how they spelt their name, but the Reed uh, uh, they, uh, was a Reed family that lived up at, at Hoadley that I knew real well. But uh, uh, the other Reed family I did not know well. Okay. I did not really know. So, so um, since we're on the topic of uh, families in the area, uh, I know um, the farm where you, the hog farm uh, is near uh, Glasscock Cemetery. The Glasscock. Yeah, did you know the I knew, Glasscocks? I, I knew the Glasscocks, yes. Okay. What did you, uh, were they also dairy farmers or were they pig no, farmers? Uh, Mr. Glasscock was a railroad man. Uh, Mr. Glasscock was railroad. And, uh, and there where uh, uh, the restaurant is now, uh, if you take uh, the old Davis Ford Road, you just go down that hill a ways and up on the right is where uh, Old Davis Ford Road is where the Glasscock Farm was. And, hmm. uh, that uh, the cemetery is off of it, it's right on Miniville. That's on Miniville Road and the Parkway. But the, their farm was uh, off of Old Davis Ford Road. Right. Uh, really? Okay. And, and but you said he was a railroad man. Yes, he worked for the railroad. So uh, I, their farm was uh, more like a self-reliance. It, it, it was not a very much of an operating farm, no. It was like uh, chickens and a cow right. for just, milk and just, stuff like that. Just for the family, mostly. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, tell me about the hog farm. Well, uh, like I said, we moved here and they had had to do something to make a living. So, uh, and as I said, we we moved to Featherstone. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you want any information about uh, the any back history of Featherstone or not. Certainly. But uh, Featherstone Farm ran from uh, where the 7-Eleven is clear to the river. It was a large farm. And as you go in uh, uh, Featherstone Road, the building that's still standing, that was the post office. And just below the post office was a real long, huge horse barn. Hmm. And then just past the horse barn were two real long dairy barns. And right across from the uh, horse barn was a blacksmith shop. And then uh, across from the dairy barns was a real large building they called the Comus factory. They said it was a cheese factory. And all of that was passed and gone when, when we moved there. We used the dairy barns to feed hogs. We actually spread garbage right out in the dairy barns and the hogs ran on that to feed them. And then the big main house, uh, just before you get to where the uh, post office was, was up on the hill to the right. And, and there was a big water tower up there where they had pumped water in that water tower hmm. uh, there. And, uh, so they had, uh, how many acres do you think that might have been? Um, that sounds like a I'm large... I'm just guessing, but I would say probably in a neighborhood of... Uh, 100, 100 uh, 125, 50 acres, somewhere in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I'll say at least that, because it went clear to the river. And we farmed that and raised corn and uh, soybeans and such as that there too. And this is uh, in the 1930s, 40s era? Yes, sir. Uh, so and and then as, as you went on down and crossed the railroad, uh, now, and you turned left, you went, uh, you went up, now to where you turn into time and tide, and that was a real good beach. And that mm -hmm. was called Davis's Beach. 
and people uh, come clear from D.C. Uh, to use that beach. And uh, it was very popular. They had a dance hall, they had uh, entertainment and swings. The pier went out quite a ways. And, and the water was uh, very clean and sandy and... Uh, uh, Time and tide, that's uh, near, like where Veterans Park is right now. Uh, time, the time yeah, and tide. Yeah, it would be, uh, yeah, uh, the, the beach would be right where Time and Tide is. Veterans Park, I think, is a little past that, just on the road past that. Mm -hmm. And there was a man, uh, that was a hog farm there too at one time. Mm -hmm. they, they fed hogs there too. It was a lot of hog farms. And, uh, you know, there, I, I, it seems like the, the cattle uh, and dairy was a, a little bit more west than the, the Occoquan and Potomac River and stuff, but uh, there were significant uh, dairy farms around here as well. Yes, there was, uh, well, there was uh, two dairy, uh, larger dairy farms. Uh, the one was, uh, I think, E.W. Thompson, and that that was right where Ronsco Plaza is. And uh, I went to school with the uh, with the Thompson uh, family. There was a couple gr uh, girls and a son. And uh, then there was another Thompson, but that was down uh, on Route One, just before we crossed Route One Bridge into the right. And and that was another dairy farm of Thompsons. And it, when, when you refer to the Route One Bridge, are you talking about going across the Occoquan from Prince William to Fairfax, Is that, uh, or you think uh, a different bridge? When you say Route One Bridge, uh, yeah, that, I was going from uh, Prince William into Fairfax. Right, right, where we got the railroad, I ninety five, Route One, and, 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 and you know, just before you cross that bridge is where the uh, railroad station was, mm -hmm. and that was a very busy railroad station. And there was what three or four houses when you crossed over the little overhead bridge. There went in there. There was uh, several houses right behind the. Uh, where the railroad station was. That's and like uh, Dawson's Beach Road, kind of an area. Well, you, you'd go across Dawson Beach, but then it was just like a driveway, went like down to the river and, and behind, the, and, on, and that's where you got into the post office, uh, part of the post office, a lot of it. Hmm. Um, I mean, the uh, railroad station. Railroad station, wow. That's really interesting. But, uh, that whole section right they, there. They ship uh, things out of there uh, uh, because I know my father-in-law and, and uh, uh, another man, they fished commercially uh, and they ship fish to New York right out of the station there and they, a lot of pulp wood was shipped out into that area and uh, and even uh, there was a local man, uh, Mr. Mr. Taylor, that lived over in the Lake Ridge area, uh, and he hewed railroad ties by hand with a, wow. what you call a broad axe, and and there's where he would uh, take his ties, railroad ties, to sell them. And uh, of course, you know the main employment for the area then was the Lorton Workhouse and Reformatory. Mm. That was the the big employment center, and. Uh, a large percent of the people that uh, uh, lived in Woodbridge uh, worked at, at uh, uh, D.C. Lorton uh, Workhouse and Reformatory. As uh, guards and our cooks or uh, were they? It was, it was all, they had all kinds of things, guards and, and, and Lorton, Lorton not only uh, was a reformatory, but they, they had a large farm. The, uh, oh, they I had a dairy that. farm, they had a hog farm, they hauled garbage out of D.C. Uh, from the, what you call the city plant where they had picked up from house to house. And uh, the last years that that hog farm ran, my first cousin was the manager of the hog farm. Oh, wow. De his name was Dale Argenbright. And, uh, and, they, and they did a lot of the uh, laundry and uh, and, and furnished food uh, for uh, 
even uh, some of the in DC in in DC and they had a big laundry and uh, like I say they raised a lot of cattle hogs a farm that makes sense because they would need that set up for the prisoners right and and my my uh, father-in-law and Warren Clark who I told you that ran the post office mm -hmm. they commercially feast on the side uh, and ship fish but my father-in-law uh, fished uh, with prisoners for the prison and uh, on work details uh, he they, they had like uh, uh, oh, yeah uh, that, that was one of his jobs he, he was a guard but but he fished had prisoners and they fished regularly to get fish to feed the prisoners and they 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 had nets they had uh, what's called hall sands which they put, nets, pulled yeah. it in and then they had trap nets and so they did a lot of fishing right off of Featherstone so a lot of times uh, we didn't help uh, when he was uh, with the prisoners but we helped them a lot when they were fishing with haul sands and tra trap nets and things like that. I've done uh, sanding on small uh, creeks, uh, and that's when you go from bank to bank uh, with the net. Uh, well, and then they you, would do you have a draw net. tie on the bottom side of the net, and then you pull everything in, and then bring it over to one bank, and then, then that's yeah, where well, you... See, they would go way out, right out of the water and pull it into shore. Just lay it out around big. Oh, they had it uh, floating on buoys, kind of. On they, the... they had it on a big boat, and oh. they would go out and lay it out, and it had floats on top and lay it on the bottom. And then, as you pulled it in, you had people on each end. Somebody'd have to kind of go along the back and hold the bottom line down and the bottom up, and it pulled in a lot of fish. But and like I say, they they actually they fished to feed. Uh, the prisoners the workhouse so and also with uh, the farming and raising of livestock uh, they uh, would have a surplus at, at certain times that they would uh, send to DC you were saying they would provide food yeah. other, to other than just the prisoners yeah in, in, into some of their facility in DC right oh to send to other prison locations right uh, oh wow like, uh, like the jail or something in DC and stuff like that. Right. But but they they fished uh, really uh, like I say for Wharton. But then on the side, uh, my father-in-law and, and Mr. Clark, uh, they they fished commercially to ship fish and sell fish, and would even go around through the community selling fish. Hmm. That's amazing. So. We've got uh, livestock, uh, dairy, hogs. Uh, now, as far as chickens, uh, that, I'm wondering, did, we didn't really have any poultry enterprise in Prince William County. It, it was mostly for households. Right. Everybody was raising chickens, but Everybody it wasn't. Everybody had chickens, and a lot, of, a lot of people sold just eggs, you know, and mostly just from a house where people knew them, or they might take them to the store and then way way back uh, you, you I guess when we first come here you could take your eggs to the store and trade them for groceries and they would ship those eggs send them into DC is that kind of like what happened at the handy dandy market people would come in no, from no, that was uh, before that day oh. handy dandy market that had kind of faded that had faded out uh, so it actually started using currency. Way back before in the old country stores, you could take eggs in and trade them for your groceries. That's really good. That's and and they, then they would send them into D.C. Awesome. So, um, back to uh, the Mendeville hog farm. Uh, it, it, I, I'm trying to remember, wasn't that one of the first locations uh, where electricity got to Prince William County, or weren't you instrumental in making uh, your farm electrified at a certain point? Well, I, I wasn't the first. Uh, uh, I was in high school, school before we had electricity, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the co-op had uh, started up 
I think about seven years before I went on that board, seven or eight years. But my first house was the corner of Smoketown and Minneville. And I fronted Minneville with that road. It's where the Snowco Station is now. Right. And, and the, the, power, the, church, the power company right. served that house. And then I built a house one pole away from that down uh, Smoketown, and the power company wouldn't serve it because it wasn't profitable. And the co-op was serving a little farm down uh, where Garfield High School is. And they come up there and went through the, uh, served that house and went through the field and served my farm buildings. Now then it was Prince William Electric. That's what was started. And, uh, and in 83, Prince William Electric merged with Tri-County Electric in Leesburg to form Novak in 2083 and uh, 19, you on the main road or in town you couldn't get electricity and it got to be a problem uh, because if a good load come along the power company would parallel the co-op lines and they would go to that now uh, so the General Assembly drew a line halfway between where the co-op served and the power company served and a lot of those territories so then, whose ever area that it was in, it's, it, it, then it's served by the co-op or the power company. And a lot of people wonder why the co-op may be on one side of the street and the power company on the other. That's the reason. Mm -hmm. Now, Novak serves Potomac Mills because when the General Assembly had a lot of those territories, there was a couple of houses back in the woods that the power company didn't want. So. Uh, that's the history, and a lot of people, even today, ask me why they can't get uh, why they can't get uh, you know power from Novak, and it's because those it's what area you live in is where you get your power. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you want this history or not, anything about the co-ops. That's fine. Yeah. Well, you know, there's about 900 electric co-ops in the country. And uh, uh, back in the Roosevelt administration, people that couldn't get electricity because the power companies would not serve rural areas because they weren't profitable, they'd get a group of people together, they'd elect a board of directors, and the government loaned the money at 2%, and they built their own systems. And now they serve about 75% of the land mass of the country and 25% of the people. And Novec is one of the ten largest and most successful co-ops in the country. And uh, they have been rated the best electric company, and they stay in the top three over all of your large power companies and everything. Nationwide. Nationwide. Mm -hmm. And you've been uh, instrumental in that. Mm -hmm. I went on that board uh, uh, in 1920, in 1950, I was 25 years old. So I just went off of it the uh, 1st of October last year. After 68 years, I'm the longest serving director of one of the 900 co-ops in the country. So uh, you, uh, That to me says that you've uh, seen and been involved in a lot of the decision making that has made Novak what it is today. Well. It, it, We've, we've had a good board of directors, we've had good management, and uh, Novec has been one of the best managed companies in the, in the country. And even though they have grown like they have, uh, they have about 75% equity. And you know, anybody that gets their power from a cooperative, they are the owners. Mm -hmm. And all the profit goes back to, to, those, to them. Yeah, you return money to uh I, I, I want to call them customers, but right. they're uh, members of the cooperative. Right. You, uh, they, when you show a profit, you actually return funds to them, which I, was, I, I find uh, very wonderful and uh, amazing. Um, tell me a little bit more about the history of uh, uh, Novak for, while we're on this. Well. Uh uh, I, there was one thing that I, uh, I was trying to ask, and um, 
But you, you mentioned that uh, a moment ago. 1950 is when you came on the board? 1950. And when we were talking about that home on Smoketown uh, that wasn't getting service uh, because it wasn't profitable, what year was that? That would have been about, uh, let me see. Mid 30s or 40s? Or? It, it would, it would, no, it would, it would have been about 40, let's see, about 40, about around 47. Oh, right, right after the war. Right, right, around, right around 47, mm -hmm. 47, 48 right there. So that's when, it, that kind of like sparked your interest in uh, helping the community get electricity. Because right. then you, uh, you became a board member in 1950, so. Yeah the, uh, yeah, the county agent and the manager of the co-op then come and ask me if I was elected, would I serve on that board? And uh, I was on the board, I've been, I was on the board then from 1950 to uh, Last year, 1950. I'm trying to do just some American history in my head. Uh, 68. Uh, Eisenhower, president, 1950. So, maybe I got it wrong, but I'm just. Like, <laughs> and, and you know now, um, there was a school right there uh, across the street where the Exxon is. See, I, and now I'm thinking about that intersection, and I also uh, wanted to know they moved the Bethel Church. Okay. Uh, it wasn't that also very near that intersection. Yeah, uh, the, it, the, yeah, it was right diagonally across from my house. And now it's it's off they, in the they field. Were, they moved it over there and you know, they built and they a moved new the old one. church back. Yeah. And uh, yes, that was Bethel Methodist Church. Bethel Methodist. And, and uh, so the congregation of that were they uh, friends and neighbors of yours? And, well, I, I knew a lot, a lot of a lot of the people there. Yes. So um, um, the uh, cemetery behind the Lowe's, was that their cemetery or uh, where was their burial ground for that Bethel Methodist Church? Uh, Do you know? Uh, the, the cemetery where? The one behind Lowe's. Now it's kind of like in a uh, little section of like when you go to, to the loading area. What, that, that strip mall that's got the Kentucky Fried Chicken and the Dunkin' Donuts and the Lowe's. There's a little cemetery I'm right there. I'm not really acquainted with that cemetery. Oh, that one, so no. I, I was just trying to put two and two together. But, but now the school, you know, the Bethel School uh, was right straight across from my house. And that was a two-room school. And my aunt, Ruth, Ruth Ruff, and uh, Mrs. Robinson were the teachers, and they taught four grades. Ruth Ruff? R Ruth Ruff, right. And, what, and Mrs. Robinson. Mrs. Robinson. Were the teachers. And uh, they even had a wood stove. And, a little uh, pot belly stove? My stuff. two oldest children, because I've got a son that's 73, 72, they ran across there to school. <laughs> they had the short commute. And at one time, there was land on the side where I lived that had never been deeded. And the reason it hadn't been, they were supposed to make that a high school. And they had to have so much land to make it uh, legally a high school. And so uh, it was called the Snap Place. The, the place that I had, the farm was the Snap Place. And Snap had agreed to give them uh, it was a, a couple acres or something there so that it, it could be an accredited high school. So finally, years and years later, uh, before I sold the farm, uh, I worked with the county or whatever and we agreed uh, to where uh, they got that land or uh, some way, but anyway, it was uh, uh, at one time supposed to be a accredited high school. Hmm. Never got built though. No. Uh, <laughs> and of course when I went to school, the Occoquan School, which is now the Elizabeth Vaughan School, mm -hmm. uh, was a grade and the high school. And it brought the children clear from Quantico to make four rooms of high school. 
and Elizabeth Bowen was her principal and taught math. Hmm. And, and the, the overall uh, student population, what would you say, maybe a hundred or two hundred or? No, you that? take a, a, a high school class. I don't know. I guess I doubt if a high school class would be a hundred back then. Yeah. Back then. And, uh, so that uh, the first official high school was the Garfield High School that now the Ferlazzo building occupies. Yeah, that, yeah that's the Garfield High School down uh, uh, Route 1 in Cardinal Drive. Right, uh, off, right off of Cardinal 1 there. And wasn't that also uh, your, your father and an uncle that... That was uh, my father and man, I mean my uncle, my father's twin brother, Gilmer Garber, and, and Grover Manderfield. Grover Manderfield. That's where the uh, field right. part comes That's from. where it got his name is Grover Manderfield and Gilmer Garber, which was my father's twin brother. And they gave the land for the school. And uh, so that's where it got its name. And that was uh, opened, um, what was, the, when was the dedication and opening of that? This, uh, the Garfield High School. The, uh, what, what, when did it open? The first year? I couldn't tell you what year. My oldest son uh, went there. He's, he's 72 now, so mm. uh, but he went to the old Garfield. Oh, that reminds me also of another uh, local uh, farming family that you might know. Uh, that I was involved with when I first got in, into uh, historic Prince William play. Uh, Gerald McDonald, Janie and Gerald McDonald. I, I knew them, but not real well. Because mm -hmm. he was uh, one of the original uh, attendees of Garfield High School. Right. I, I think he, uh, the, the very first graduating class, he was in that. Right. That, that, that what's reminded me of him. He was, he was wonderful. I was I was privileged to know and meet him. Uh, he's since passed, uh, but um, and Janie moved out to Colorado. Uh, yeah, and she and she was a longtime board member of the historical commission uh, for Prince William County. Did uh, and uh, he told me stories while I was working on the Greenwood Cemetery. Uh, we he, he actually came out and helped. Uh, him and Bill Olson uh, when I first started cleaning up that cemetery uh, about how you know Miniville Road as we know it today isn't it uh, was actually Old Delaney where Old Delaney is now right. where it goes behind the recreation center and then it crosses over and pops up uh, behind the commuter parking lot uh, that was the original track line for Miniville Road so yeah, I, I really enjoyed knowing him. Um, were they like a uh, casual acquaintance? Did you? Uh, yeah, or? yeah, I did. Like I said, that was all. I, I didn't know them well. Oh, so you don't know uh, about like what type of farming or any of their. No. Uh, no. You don't have any. You don't have any funny anecdotes or anything about Jerry or Janie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gerald and Janie McDonald, I uh, just kind of... I just really don't recall, I, I recall the names, but not much about them because I was never very acquainted with them. Oh, okay. Did and you, did you ever, and I think she's even passed away, the Barneses, did you, Hal Barnes and Nellie Barnes, did you ever run into them in this? I didn't get uh, I didn't get to meet the Barneses. They, Did you know who I'm talking about? I, I've uh, read uh, some of the. Uh, well, she taught school for years and years, mm -hmm. and he, he's been dead some years. But she, I think, this time recently, she had gone to the, uh, uh, well, the home there uh, down at Lake Ridge, uh, and they used to own all this land right here at the corner of. Uh, Spriggs and Miniville. 
Okay. If you go straight across Minneville and Spriggs, all on both sides of that road, and they even, uh, uh, he died quite a few years before she did, and just within the last couple of years, uh, they sold off that side of the road, the left side going toward uh, 234, and they made them leave the old house, and if you notice, that's fenced off there. Mm -hmm. And that was Nellie Barnes. And she was one of the early, early school teachers. She taught at Occoquan for years, Nellie Barnes. All right. And her husband was Hal Barnes. Hal and Nellie. But they owned both sides of that road. They would have been neighbors uh, of the McDonald's too, because the McDonald's yeah, lived I, I knew, the, I knew of the well. McDonald's, but I was never close to them. Hal and Nellie, and she was an early school teacher. Yep. And then speaking of uh, Spriggs Road too, and uh, one of the things that was done, because we're building houses all over the place now. These old family uh, farms are, that had a lot of acreage are becoming housing yeah, developments. As you go up Spriggs Road, just before you get out to uh, uh, 234, on the right, uh, when I grew up, that was the Briggs. Uh, uh, it was Briggs, and then uh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, Hal, uh, wait a minute. Uh, had the hog farm there. Uh, uh, I, I just had it on my tongue while I go. But that was another hog farm. They were there for years. Uh, uh, I think I was probably the last hog farm to close. The, the next to last one was down there next to Lake Ridge was Gordon Armstrong. Uh, I'll think of Bethan's name in a minute, but I knew him well. Howard Hawkins, just before you get up to uh, 234 on the right, well, that was a big farm, and that was Howard Hawkins. And uh, Speaking of that uh, section of headed towards 234, the uh, Howison Homestead Park? where all the soccer fields are. That's, uh, did you know that family? Uh, uh, I didn't know them well, no. I, I, I know there's, there, I don't know if it's still up, but there used to be a big barn out there. I think maybe they were into dairy. Uh, and, and you know, uh, talking about dairy farm, we was talking about them a while ago. Uh, uh, as you, coming up Minneville and you cross the parkway on your left, you know, and, and you got uh, uh, the senior center there. Mm -hmm. Right in there was a dairy farm. That was Cleve Russell's farm too. There was a, very, a dairy farm there. Not as large a dairy as some of those, but they shipped milk. It was a fairly large dairy right there. And that was Cleve Russell's. Time ago. No, we still got more time. Um, uh, okay, let me get back to. Oh, uh, speaking of the hog farm, I know you got a great story about. Uh, when they had to slaughter all the disease or something? Yeah, the disease story. Okay, uh, well, what year was that? I can't tell you the exact year. I gave somebody that's working with the Historic Society, I had my daughter get for me, a movie of us feeding the last hogs and then where they buried them. I think it was David Cuff that I worked with, maybe, because he mentioned something about having the video. Yeah, I, know if he, I never heard back from him if he saw it or, or ran it or not. Okay, but, but let's just go ahead and uh, talk okay, about Okay, well, <clears throat> there was a lot of hog farms, and... Uh, I happened to be the first one to get what you call vascular exanthemia, which was similar to hoof and mouth. They would get blisters in their mouth and on their feet. As soon as the blisters broke, they were okay. They'd get over it. And uh, so then everybody was feeding what they call raw garbage. They just picked up garbage and brought it in and fed it. And uh, uh, so, and the only way they said that uh, well, I wound up, I got it. Uh, the district workers from Tory got it. And I think it was one other one. 
And uh, uh, so it was at Lorton as well, the district reformatory. You said no, no, they didn't. I don't think they got it. Oh, district. Uh, it was just a couple farms, and after the ones that did get it, uh, they come in and they they brought a horse and a cow in uh, to test them, and, and then uh, if a if one would get a blister, they would take a thing like you'd scrape an inner tube with the patch it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, I mean, they'd pull the horse or uh, cow's tongue out or something and they'd get this blister and try to get a little juice to see if they could give the horse and cow the hoof mouth. They never got it. And and I never did have but one pen that actually had it and they were all over it. But they shot and buried 1,389 of mine right behind Global Food and the horse and the cow. And so one of these days somebody's going to wonder when they push that up hold up what's there. But they, uh, and then we had to go through all kind of tests and put in, we we hauled our garbage then and put it in the sewer. Then they made everybody start cooking garbage. And we had to cook all the garbage, all the farmers, farmers had to cook garbage. Hmm. And we started out doing every, all kinds of things with wood and tanks and everything. We hauled this garbage in big open steel body trucks. And I wound up with trucks at the farm with big open steel bodies, and we put uh, like five pipes in the bottom, five uh, uh, three-quarter inch pipes, and drilled a sixteenth inch hole every six inches, and we, we hooked on, uh, had big, uh, well, steam boilers. We <laughs> That's started, clever. We, we started out <laughs> with coal. We did everything, but we wound up with the big steam boilers, and we hooked on to high-pressure steam. And we could make a six-ton truckload of garbage boil in a couple of hours. Wow! So, <laughs> and then we left that set on overnight, which was hot. You'd spread that out and let the hogs in the next morning on it. And they they probably enjoyed it because it was warmer than the usual fare. But but we was a year we was out because we had to clean up and test pigs and all kind of things. But uh, uh, so that so that was detrimental to your uh, business. Yeah, that when when that happened, that's when we should have quit. And it's a shame now, that still, I think, in this country, that they don't use it because it is actually really good food for those hogs, and it makes good meat. And uh, it, it's a real waste, really. I remember when I worked at the Lazy Susan Dinner Theater as a dishwasher. We had a, 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 a building behind the kitchen where we would at the end of the night take our slop buckets that came out of the bottom of the dishwasher and uh, at a certain point during the week I think maybe twice a week a guy would come and he would collect the slop buckets to take to his pigs and this is in the 1980s. Uh, well, do you remember the Lazy Susan Dinner Theater? My, my mother-in-law was born at the Lazy Susan. Get out of town. <laughs> You see, was born uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, the, Mac McElroy Clark, they called her, but uh, she was named after somebody at the Lazy Susan McElroy or something. But when I was there, it was uh, the old man Gates. It was the Gates family was running it. Uh, and uh, Well, my father-in-law, he fed up. In fact, when, when I he was going with his daughter before we got married, I got married in 45. Uh, I used to stop in there, I got him to feed the hogs. His name was Minnick, Dan Minnick. He's the one that feast with Warren Clark. And uh, and uh, he went to Alexandria, he picked up uh, the Old Country Club and uh, one place up there on, on Route 1, but he fed hogs. So he, he may have been the one getting the garbage up there because he lived, when you crossed the railroad and uh, we're on another pass around there on Colchester, Colchester. Road. Yeah. We know where the park is now. The, yeah. Okay, that was his property. Oh, okay. And that's where my wife was born, where that park is there now. Really? That's uh. I, on on the left side, the house he tore down was my uh, wife's sister and her husband, and where the tennis courts and all are. Right. And on the other side, that's where my wife was born. Hmm. Of course, she passed away. 23 years ago. And, and what, what year was she born? She was born to, uh, 
about a year and a half after me. I was born 25, so she was born, what, I guess, 27. So, at, so back in, uh, let's call it the 30s, uh, uh, to me, I know that the rf and Railroad is uh, just over 100, that bridge that they built for rf and is just over 100 years old. I think it was built in 1917. And, uh, and so, um, was, I'm trying to think, you know, like say when your wife, and you were young. What, other than the railroad bridge, what crossed was, did they, had they built another bridge yet? I'm trying to remember. Uh, Route 1 had, a, did it have like an asphalt bridge or? No, it was. How did the, how did the, the it, it automobiles? Was, if I remember right, it was, it was just a one bridge. And uh, because Route 1 was just, Dirt road at that time, yeah, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, well, even the main route one uh, at one time was just three lanes. You had a passing lane when we were first here, and uh, hmm. and of course I'm, I'm sure you've heard a lot about the bridge there at Occoquan. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to uh, picture what uh, what it was like, uh, like saying your uh, your. When you, because you used to travel up to Alexandria to get a uh, slop from the uh, uh, restaurants to feed the hogs, right? Oh, well, it was all over DC. We picked up all the big hotels, Washington, Willard, Occidental, Navy Yard, uh, government places, uh, and you had. Uh, in later years, that garbage got expensive. I paid as much as fifty thousand dollars a year for garbage. Wow. Now, the hotels and restaurants. They gave it to you for bringing their silver back, and they threw gobs of silver away. But you didn't catch it all, I'm sure. <laughs> we all the camps and churches and everybody else had, and our church is still using silver out of the, that come from the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and, but uh, and big silver pitchers and uh, even uh, the what you got at the hotels and the restaurants. When the men would clean our feeders off of the morning. They'd pick up a little bit of money because you even had some tips in there because the bus boys a lot of times would break the tips right in the garbage. And, Coins? Uh, uh, so wow. uh, you saved everything. You saved the tips. Uh, uh, we had a basket hanging on the fence where you put the silverware in. Uh, we had a bin where you threw the bones in. They went to the uh, grease factory where they ground them up. For the you, we hauled all the trash to the woods. And when my brothers and I, then at times we would we would get all this glass and we broke it up in 55 gallon drums. You talk about recycling. Yeah. And where I told you the Coleman's factory was, it was a big platform there. And we'd fill those drums up. And when we got enough drums filled up, enough 55 gallon drum of glass would weigh 500 pounds. My father would take it to Baltimore and sell it. So we were recycling way back there. So uh, by that time when it was in the drum, it was all or, uh, sorted? It was just, uh, we'd pick up like all the white glass, you know, and just break it up in the drum. Of course, we picked up all the Coke bottles. We got a lot of uh, Coke bottles and ginger ale bottles out of the garbage. We washed them and sold them for... Uh, uh, by weight? The little ones brought two cents, and the big ones brought a nickel. Oh. But, uh, Elm Farm, down here where Elm Trailer Park is, yeah. the park goes through, it's all Davis grown up. Uh, when we left Featherstone, the guy had beat my father and my uncle out of everything they had. And my brothers and I had saved, which was a lot of money, we had saved up a thousand dollars selling bones and broken glass and pop bottles and we had a lot of money and when they bought Elm Farm that was 200 acres they bought it from a fellow by the name of Charles I believe it was Charles Dewey and we loaned them a we loaned them a thousand dollars they paid six thousand dollars for that 200 acres <laughs> and uh, money made from bones and glass yeah we did everything we picked up bones broken glass uh, 
uh, all kind of things. And uh, just let then you just let it go. Okay. That that's something I I, I didn't know. Uh, learning, 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 learning. I gotta try to go back to some of my original ideas and see what I missed out on. Uh, just um, getting back to some of the family names that I know about from the area. Uh, they um, are, are just near where the uh, Ferlaza building is off Cardinal Drive when they were developing that housing community. Uh, Bill Olson was very instrumental in saving a family cemetery for the merchant family. I just wanted to ask you. I don't know how many people as you were growing up uh, that were farmers and local residents in the area that you might have. In this area I knew Kate Merchant very well. For, uh, he had the, the candy, uh, well they, were, they used that candy factory for Kate. a warehouse for a while. Yes, Kate and Merchant, the Merchant Tire. Merchant Tire. Yeah, him and, yeah uh, I was real close to Kate Merchant, and and he was on, you know, the uh, hospital board, uh, uh, Prince uh, Prince Hospital, and uh, and I, now he was in the tire business, uh, Firestone, and he also in Manassas he he did recapping and uh, tires and everything, and. Uh, uh, I'm the only uh, surviving original trustee of Prince, Prince William Hospital, mm. uh, and Kate Merchant was uh, chairman of the board at that time. And uh, now, uh, and well, he's having the birthday party, and he didn't show, and his son went to find him, and he had had a heart attack and passed away. Uh, but anyway, he was. Fairly young when he passed. He was pretty way, yes. Uh, and his wife May, she lived a long time. She hadn't been dead too long. May, uh, uh, I actually met her a few times. I, I uh, when I first started working, I'm an auto mechanic, so uh, I worked for Merchant Tire, and I worked at uh, the. <clears throat> well, now his dad, Keaton's dad, used to call on us to sell us truck tires because we was running a lot of trucks and. Uh, we was in the, uh, feeding home the trays and running trace trucks too in Alexander and Arlington, both. And, uh, when, and when Caton first started out, I believe one of the things that he did was to uh, uh, gather used tires and recondition them. Oh yeah, they, 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 they grooved them. They regrooved them. Yeah, so that I, and kept them, recapped them, and regrooved them. And I think the, the the first location that he worked out of was near Centerville, somewhere maybe. I'm not real sure. Yeah, he had, had a place right there on Center Street, somewhere along in there. Well, the the, the, the uh, corporate office when I first started working right. with him was off of uh, Liberia. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, May and May lived off of Mathis Avenue, I, I believe. Yeah, old, and like old. say. His dad used to call on us to sell tires and all, right? So, how did you sell tires for him? How did that work out? The what? How did that work out? You sold tires for them? No, no, we bought a lot of oh, tires. Oh, bought tires. Because we was running quite a few trucks, big oh, trucks. Oh, so you were like a, a fleet we was a customer. We was a customer. Customer, a fleet One customer. thing that's interesting, I told you I was on the uh, uh, board of uh, the hospital there. My wife was on one of the early trustees here at Potomac. But one reason they wanted me on that board uh, at Prince William Hospital, back at that time there was friction between the western end of the county and the eastern end of the county. Have you ever heard that? Oh, I've heard that a lot. <laughs> they called this the lower end. Mm -hmm. And they didn't like to be called the lower end because they was paying more, getting more taxes into the county than, than the western end because of Possum Point. Mm. So that was one reason they wanted me. And then, so they got me and Ann Wall, who was very prominent down here. You heard of Ann Wall? No, but. 
Oh, uh, the walls owned the bank, and uh, and they were the bankers. And now her son has been on the Potomac Hospital board almost ever since it began, and I think he still is. But but that's the reason they wanted a couple of people from the eastern end of the county uh, was basically for public relations. It was a good th one reason. I think the main reason, and uh, so and Ann Wall. It's funny how that works out, right? Yeah, I need uh, representation from the different sides to make everybody agree, kind of a thing. <laughs> Diplomacy. <laughs> I'm just and uh, so, so it's all that's been interesting too, and. Uh, and the uh, Potomac Hospital was probably the, a godsend for the county at that point. Was oh, there, yes. there was not much uh, health care available to the community until that was built, no. I imagine. No, when I, when I grew where up did, here, Where did everybody go before that hospital was built? Well, the closest thing you could, was Alexandra. That's a long but when I grew up, there were two doctors in the area, and that was Dr. Phillips and Dr. Falazzo. Falazzo, the Falazzo building is named after him. The what? Falazzo building, is that okay, the same well, family? My father and Dr. Falazzo were on the board of supervisors at the same time. I see. And, uh, uh, and so uh, that's where you get the name for the, uh, uh, the, Gar Gar the Falazzo building now. Mm -hmm. It's from Dr. Falazzo, and he and Dr. Phillips, like I say, were the only two doctors in this whole area because, just like, I guess I was 11 or 12 years old, and back then, you know, I was cranking a car, and if you didn't push a spark up, your hand, thumb behind the crank, kick back and kick back, well, it broke these two bones right up over these two. Wow. My uncle took me down to Dr. Phillips, and he caught me in the elbow, and Dr. Phillips caught him in the hand, and pulled, and he put a wood splint on it, wrapped it up, and sent me home. So it worked. And never did have any trouble. <laughs> 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 now, what would it cost you? Did for at least give you a stick to bite on, or something. <laughs> 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 that would sound painful. But they, but he got it straight, and you're he, at, he never did give me any trouble. At 95 today, you're 95 right now, right? I'll be 95 in January. In January, and your arm works good, and that so <laughs> still good. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Dr. Phillips was a good doc. Dr. Phillips. Well, now Dr. Phillips wound up building and lived right, right back of where, uh, uh, over the, uh, the center where you worked. You said uh, uh, the, uh, the, the nightclub. Oh, uh, the. Lazy Susan Lazy Dennis. Su he, lived, he bought property and lived on in behind where Lazy Susan and went right in past Lazy Susan. Hmm. That's where Dr. Phillips wound up living just for, for years, for some years before he passed away. 